I will talk about something every single person sitting in this room has done. Some do it more than others, some are more practiced than others, but mostly we aren't even aware when doing it. I'm talking about lying. More specifically, why we lie. Luckily for you, I've become an expert on human psychology and can fully answer that question. Well, that was a little bit of a lie, but still, I hope to clarify the reasoning behind lying a bit. Everyone lies, that is not debatable, and if you just told yourself that you never did, well, congratulations, this is your premiere. Humans aren't the only ones that lie, though. Animals do so as well. An example would be the blue jay, who is known as a notorious liar in the animal kingdom, since blue jays imitate a variety of hawk species, making other birds scatter away from the danger, leaving the area to the blue jay. Or my favorite example of animals lying is Coco the, the gorilla, who is taught sign language and then used that to blame a kitten for ripping a sink out of the wall. <laughs> Humans, however, have an advantage over animals. We can deceive through talking. Think about the last time you lied. Was it that the food someone cooked for you is delicious, or that you're fine, that you can't make it because you're busy, or that you're on your way while actually still being in your pajamas. Um, while actually still being in your pajamas. I would also like to note and emphasize that uh, I'm talking about small, day-to-day -day lies, also known as white lies, and people like you and me, not pathological liars. That is a whole other discussion. But how white are white lies really? Most of the lies that we tell on a daily basis are white lies, so nothing too big and drastic. But if these lies are so insignificant and don't really change anything, why do we do it? A lie, deception, dishonesty, disinformation, a myth or pretense, no matter what we call it, all of these words are based on the same concept. A lie, by definition, is an assertion that is believed to be false, typically used with the purpose of deceiving someone else. And we all know that it's wrong to do. To tell the truth was probably one of the earliest morals we were taught as kids, and yet, humans have found so many different ways to lie to each other. I remember when I was younger, my sister and I used to play an unhealthy amount of Monopoly. I, as the older sister, already learned about the moral dilemma of lying, but my younger sister, well, let's say not so much. I trusted her to play truthfully, just like I did, but whenever I would return to the game, she would always end up with a suspicious amount of money, <laughs> leading me to lose every single time. I never caught her cheating, but when I asked her how she could possibly afford to build hotels on the dark blue field 30 minutes into the game, she never admitted that she took any money. That, however, didn't stop me from lying myself, and over time I realized that there are way more ways to lie than to take a few extra bucks in a Monopoly game. There are calculated lies in which the liar tells a lie realistic enough for the other not to get suspicious, or spoken untruths, which are just straight up 100% lies. Avoiding the truth or doubting the truth in a conversation can also be perceived as lying. One doesn't always have to tell a lie to be lying. Dishonest actions or inactions are also lies. Even exaggerating the truth, which I do way too often, can be perceived as lying. So does that make me a bad person just because I want to tell my story with a bit of extra entertainment? I don't think so, and I'm not saying that because I want to consider myself to be a good person, but because everyone lies, we can't consider everyone to be a bad person. It has something to do with beggars and choosers. But something all liars can agree on is that it sucks to be lied to. To find out that someone, maybe even someone that you truly trusted, has been dishonest with you can really hurt. So we, as humans, have come up with the only logical decision. We perfected our lies. Over time, humans have become better and better at lying. Additionally, and luckily for liars, we're also terrible at detecting them, making the chances of getting away with a quick lie increasingly high. I mean, we've probably all watched videos on YouTube on how to detect lies in hopes of becoming the next Sherlock Holmes, searching for the truth, all the truth, and nothing but the truth. No? Just, just me? Okay. 
In fact, we're so bad at detecting lies that the only chance we thought we had was to build a machine that does it for us. Lie detectors, also commonly known as polygraphs, were invented in 1921 uh, and were created by a combination of four people. They measure a combination of your heart rate, blood pressure, how fast you breathe and whether you sweat or not. Unfortunately for us, not even lie detectors can promise us the truth since there's no universal physiological reaction humans have when lying. My point here is not to bore you with how a lie detector works, but rather to point out that we, as humans, went to such great lengths to create one in the first place. But since we can't carry a polygraph with us at all times, not to mention that one costs up to $1,500, let alone force everyone we talk to to participate in taking the test. We just have to trust the people around us not to lie and rely on our gut feeling. Bad news for the trusting people in here, a study conducted by Robert Fieldman working for the University of Massachusetts showed that 60% of people lied two to three times in a 10 minute conversation alone. It is extremely easy to lie which is why we do it so often. So how do we rationalize lying? Before I answer that question, I want to point out that Theodosius Dobzhansky, a geneticist and human evolutionary biologist, states that nothing makes sense except in the eyes of evolution. Our brains have been the same for roughly 150,000 years, meaning that the brain that tells us it's okay to lie is the one that was probably more resistant to one that was, let's say, more truthful or trusting. Overall, we can break the <clears throat> reasoning behind lying into three categories. The first one would be a pro-social lie, meaning the only purpose that lie serves is to protect yourself and someone else in a social environment. For example, telling your friend that the dress they're wearing looks great. The second one would be a self-centered lie, typically used to make yourself look better, and the only purpose that lie serves is to help yourself. Such as telling your classmates that you aced that exam while actually internally crying about the D you received. The last one would be an other-oriented lie, meaning the only purpose that lie serves is to protect someone else like telling your friend that you also didn't start the assignment, even though you did, just to make them feel less stressed. Consciously or unconsciously, we rationalize lying because we feel like we need to protect ourselves and the target of that lie. And I don't know if I'm the only one seeing the irony here, but basically we're telling ourselves that we're doing something good while actually doing something bad. We feel like we're being nice by lying. In a situation in which you would be truthful all the time, I can promise you one thing. You won't come out on top, but rather closer to the bottom. People don't always want to hear the truth. I know you're all probably sick of hearing this cliche, but we can't look at our world as being black and white. There's a lot of gray, and somewhere in that gray, you can find our lies. The reason as to why we lie is not because we're evil, untruthful creatures, but because lying is an easy way out when the truth would put us at a disadvantage. And that, ladies and gentlemen, you just have to trust me on. Thank you.